the church is imploding and the faithful masses have stopped turning up on Sundays and we are seeing the most rapid decline of Christianity in this country that we may have ever seen. Do not accelerate it with heresy. Do not accelerate it with heresy. And he equates a little bit of the heresy with the diversity, equity, and inclusion. Welcome to the Father Leo Show, where I'm dishing out faith, culture, and commentary. And in this brevisode, we're going to address the question, should the Catholic Church, should the Church of Jesus Christ be more inclusive? We get a lot of these questions, especially from people who might not identify fully with the teachings of the Catholic Church. You know, should women become priests? Should we include people who, you know, identify differently sexually to be considered leaders? I mean, this whole synodal process, what is it all about? We're going to just jump into this little question with this episode. But before we do, I want to thank you for being a part of the show. If you haven't done so yet, please click subscribe, like, share, follow, comment, as well as join us on our Patreon community so that you get access to some pretty great content as well as some special perks. But it really helps us and our team to continue to provide information that's not going to divide you, but make you think from a Catholic perspective, what do you do with all of this? And so let's just jump right into it with my comments on church, faith, and inclusivity. This all started because of a video that I saw from a, from a Protestant cleric. His name is Calvin Robinson. He is actually part of a church that is considered a Nordic Catholic. Uh, they consider themselves to some degree connected to the undivided church of the first millennium. So they call it a Catholic communion. But technically, he's Protestant. Yet, he's a great thinker, especially when it comes to the logic of the Catholic Christian thought, as it really fights against some of the woke ideologies of our modern world. So listen to a little clip that I came across and I thought that it was worth commenting on, and I think it's going to be helpful to you as well. It's inclusivity. Should the church be more inclusive? Again, it's a play of words. It's, it's virtue signaling. It's to appear good rather than to be good. The church should absolutely be inclusive. Christ spent time with tax collectors and prostitutes, but it is they who went away changed, not Christ. We are fallen, therefore we are all sinners. The church is open to sinners, of course it is, that's the purpose of the church. But it should not be to encourage people to continue to sin. Our duty as clerics is to help lead people to Christ, to lead them away from sin, not to embrace it, not to affirm it. As Christians, we're called to be in the world, but not of the world. The trap that we're falling into in this debate is looking at the church through the eyes of the world rather than through his kingdom. Do not be the false teachers that the Bible warns us about. Remember your obligation to defend the faith Stop teaching about diversity, inclusion, and equality, and get back to teaching about redemption and salvation. This is spiritual neglect. Help people by telling them the truth. Be kind to people by supporting them through those struggles and reminding them that Christ suffers with them. And be compassionate by leading them to Christ when the world tries to lead them away from him. The church is imploding, and the faithful masses have stopped turning up on Sundays, and we are seeing the most rapid decline of Christianity in this country that we may have ever seen. Do not accelerate it with heresy. Do not accelerate it with heresy. And he equates a little bit of the heresy with the diversity, equity, and inclusion. You know what's interesting is that uh, they could have played with the letters, you know, I-E-D, D-I-E, but no, they chose D-E-I, which in Latin is of God. My community is voluntas D-E-I, Dei the will of God. And I can tell you that DEI in the modern sense is not of God because it plays into identity politics, which is simply a version of what, what he considered um, just a playing to the identity of a person. And he called it, he called it a, a form of, of just kind of pandering. Uh, an, an, an over-inclusion, which happens a lot in our modern world, especially when politics has taken over and become its own religion. 
And so when we call, when he, it's virtue signaling, that's what he called it, virtue signaling. And it's exactly true. Uh, in the same way, gaslighting is like all these terms, where do they come from? It's, I guess, you know, trying to make someone look bad. Virtue signaling is trying to make you look good. I'm very inclusive. Oh, really? The difficulty with inclusivity is that sometimes it leads to the immaturity and the naivete of Adam and Eve. They were very inclusive because they were just naive. They were made in God's image and likeness and therefore innocent, but in their lack of experience and to a degree their pride, they were easily manipulated and included as part of their diet, the forbidden fruit, which screwed everything up in the world. That's all there is to it. So inclusivity, if you are not educated or not a critical thinker, you're going to just become naive. You have to have some spidey senses or some stranger danger awareness. We tell children to be attentive to strangers, especially now for goodness sakes. But this whole idea of DEI is just everyone just come on in, come on in. And yes, the church's doors are always open, but you know what door people don't walk into? The confessional door. That's the problem. They go in, as Reverend Calvin Robinson says, they approach Jesus and want to change Jesus in their image and likeness rather than be changed in his image and likeness. And so whenever we hear these words, diversity, equity, and inclusion, I can tell you, it is not of God. It is actually from the evil one. Because when you have all this diversity and no clarity, no dogma, no definition, that's what the word dogma means, then you're going to get chaos. As far as equity is concerned, I'm sorry, we're not all equal. We are not the same, but we are equal in our dignity. We are equally loved by God. And I can tell you that all the people who are just yapping on about, we need to treat people more equally. Do they really treat Republicans equally? They do not. Do they treat conservatives equally? They do not. And as far as these pre-Palestine woke liberal weirdos, they're talking about, we got to be inclusive for all. I would love for them to go to Palestine, to the Gaza Strip, to the West Bank, and preach this diversity, equity, inclusion, especially when it comes to immorality. They would be killed. They literally would be killed. And it would be justified because this extreme Islam religion, they don't understand American mentality when it comes to this diversity, equity, inclusion. We're literally letting in demons into our lives if we're not taking time to discern. So the diversity, yes, these are good words because it shows that we all have many gifts and talents. St. Paul even talks about that, the multiple gifts that we all have. As far as equality is concerned, our equality should be rooted in the equal persons of the Trinity. But the fact is, we are all not equal. But to Christ, there is no East and West as long as our equality is rooted in Christ, not in some government-tampered, manufactured, strange definition because they do not treat people equally. That is a fact. And as far as inclusion is concerned, yes, of course, we need to include all people to be part of the conversation. That's the synodal process. The problem that I have with the synodal process is that people honestly think that their opinion is more valuable than the church's teaching. I would certainly hope that if you are going to be part of the Catholic Church and you want to exercise a little bit more inclusivity, can you please include in your reading materials the catechism, canon law, the history and the church and the lives of the saints, and not just simply modern authors who just simply want to include strange and new ideas because they're strange and new. That's not inclusivity. That is entertaining the curiosity with the naivete of Adam and Eve. We need to be better discerners of what it means to be diverse, to be equal, and to be inclusive. I certainly hope that this was helpful to you. Please make sure you like, subscribe, share, and comment. Should the church be more diverse, equal, and inclusive? 
Let me know your thoughts. And also consider supporting us on our Patreon community. Folks, it's the, honestly, it's the only way we can continue to do what we're doing, producing two shows each week. Obviously, it takes a staff and all of that. And so your support helps us to continue to provide good content that is not only informative, but hopefully formative helping to form your mind and your actions in the Catholic tradition. God bless you and stay hungry for God.